รู้สึกตื่นเต้นมาก <laughs> That means I'm excited, but it also means I'm anxious. <laughs> It's a funny thing about Thai language. I wish I could speak Thai instead of English. <laughs> um, so, I work for the Alternative Agriculture Network, which is a national network of organic farmers that uh, practice uh, what I would call sustainable techniques, and it um, kind of like what. Um, Sir Ken was saying is that it's a it depends on the local ecology. It depends on what's happening in uh, what the surroundings in your local environment. Um, so there's a there's a problem in the agricultural system in Thailand and in a lot of countries around the world. Um, p r i t i p a n o m y o n g which is a who's a famous, I think, one of the most important political thinkers in Thai history, once said that the government officials claim that the farmers are the backbone of the nation, but they fail to see that the farmers' backbone is already broken. And I think that we often overlook the farmer in the food system. We don't know where our food comes from. We don't know how it's produced, but it gets to our table. It's on our plates. It tastes good. Sometimes it makes us sick. Uh, but the important thing is that it's a system that's based on the exploitation of farmers and the environment that they grow food in. And chemicals like these 41 tons of Carbamate, which is a uh, full-spectrum pesticide that's banned in the U.S. and in Europe, but hasn't been banned in Thailand yet, um, is one of the chemicals that a lot of Thai farmers use on vegetables, on rice, on watermelons, um, all kinds of different products that we we love to eat. Um, <clears throat> so, this is actually what I see, and what a lot of farmers in the AN understand is um, a legacy of the Green Revolution. Uh, Thailand in the '60s pursued a, an agenda that was promoted by the U.S. and other developing forces that basically promoted uh, the use of high-yielding varieties, uh, chemical fertilizers. And a whole suite of chemical pesticides and herbicides, um, and you're left with uh, backpack sprayers uh, full of uh, different, you know, a range of different chemicals. Um, some shallot growers in s i s a k e t province using uh, that's about 20 different kinds of hormones, uh, different fungicides, uh, pesticides. Uh, shallots are used in a lot of Thai dishes. <clears throat> um, and these chemicals are also symbolic of a major shift that's happening in in agriculture in Thailand, and um, it's something that was mentioned earlier uh, in regards to the sort of industrialization of of food and of um, the way that we see the land and the, the career of the farmer. <clears throat> But. Fortunately, the um, carbamate, the first photo, is a is an example of how organizations like the AAN are actually um, essential for for farmers, for the rights of small farmers, for the protection of local environments, the protection of community health. Um, in the winter of last year, the local government in in uh, Kuchum district in Yasothon province. Tried to dump all these uh, 41 tons of this pesticide on farmers because local businessmen had friends in the local government, and they had all this budget. The government created a natural disaster budget that wasn't being used, and so they joined together and said, "Okay, we'll say there's a natural disaster in the district. Distribute the chemicals for free to farmers, and 
you'll get your cut, I'll get my cut, and it'll be great. Uh, <laughs> but the local farmers in the AN weren't happy about that and put it, you know, basically stopped it and prevented the chemicals from being distributed um, and raised a lot of community awareness about what, uh, what r the intentions of the local government really were in terms of their interest in local farmers, in terms of uh, the local environment. Um, and it, it comes from a, a really long history of um, resistance that the AAN has, has represented. Um, starting in the 80s, uh, the AAN formed with basically a kind of networking process where local farmers in different provinces and in Isan and other regions started meeting up. And that was facilitated by um, NGOs and community organizers. Just Thai, Thai NGOs will uh, refer to themselves as an NGO, even though they're just an individual. And so these people were helping facilitate a connection where farmers could meet together and exchange techniques, exchange ideas, um, and eventually formed a, a full network where uh, farmers could really, the kind of farming that they thought was important for local communities in terms of crop integration, growing a range of uh, fruits and vegetables in addition to rice or other stable crops that farmers grow in Thailand, um, and also raising livestock to uh, keep fertility local. Um, and really, it's, it's a movement that is, a, is about choice. It's about a farmer's choice to farm organically and not use, use these chemicals. But there's a, there's a sort of structure in place, or a structure that's developing that depends on the use of these chemicals. And that's where the AAN's um, political movement and uh, political orientation works. Um, from the beginning, the AAN really uh, ap approached big, big issues, including trade, intellectual property rights, GMOs, contract farming, and, and even today, uh, working on healthcare policy uh, in conjunction with the healthcare ministry. Um, and I think that it's a genuine um, social movement for uh, broader societal change. I think that, that these farmers are really uh, working for society, not just working for themselves or their local community. Um, one of these examples is our green markets that are found throughout Isan, but also in Bangkok and in, in other parts of the country. And um, these markets are great representations of what small farmers are capable of. This vendor at the Surin Green Market has eggs, has fruit, uh, has local vegetables, um, and these are all coming from small farms between um, an acre to five acres to ten acres. So, so small farmers are capable of growing a, a real diversity of crops. Um, <clears throat> In Isan, there's about 3,000 farmers that are a part of the network, and uh, <clears throat> currently they're working together with the Land Reform Office to, to get more farmers transitioning to organic farming. The Land Reform is, is part of the Agriculture Ministry, and also working with the Thai Health Promotion Foundation, which is um, a great foundation started by the government that takes, this, that takes cigarette and alcohol taxes and provides funding for small organizations to campaign about public health or initiate small projects. So the, the AAN is really working for a better food system and uh, seed saving and seed exchange is an important basis for any, any food system, right? And, you know, you have to have good seeds in order to grow any kind of plants. And here farmers are um, conducting field research on uh, local rice varieties, that they're uh, improving themselves and saving for local farmers to, to uh, expand on their own, not depend on seed companies or um, the improved varieties that have been promoted by 
the government since the Green Revolution. These are local varieties that have unique properties to the local environment. They do well in drought, they do well in flooding, they do well in all these conditions that we're concerned about today, uh, but have been over, overlooked in the process of developing hybrid seeds, to now developing GMO seeds, but are actually found in indigenous varieties. Um, and education for com consumers and youth is also a really important part of what the AN is trying to do, it's spreading awareness and spreading an understanding of where our seeds come from um, and, and how those seeds have become a, an essential part of the food system. Um, <clears throat> so I'm a part of this network as well. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be, to be sort of, uh, you know, allowed into this Isan culture of, of small farmers and, uh, you know, traditional practices, traditional ways of life. Um, and that, that's because these people are, again, they're really trying to expand awareness and, and build a network that's much bigger than just the local village or um, your own farm. Um, the photo here is of a market in, in um, Yasotan. It's one of the larger markets. And my work partially focused on trying to better understand the food system together with farmers. Because more and more farmers in Isan are buying the things that they could grow on their own. Um, and these foods are coming from large markets um, that are kind of distribution hubs for uh, foods that come from Laos or come from other parts of Thailand or maybe come from the village next door. They go to the large market and then they come back to your village. There's all kinds of different food ways, as I call them. And so what we did was initiated a participatory research project where uh, a group of farmers and villagers, some organic, some not, uh, wanted to learn together about where food was coming from. How are these things being grown? And so we put in the groundwork and got out to markets and interviewed vendors and eventually got to the fields where these things were being, these different ingredients are being grown. And that's where the backpack sprayers were, the uh, different pile, the pile of all those different labels and bottles that had been used. Um, and we found some really surprising things. And with that knowledge, the villagers were able to raise awareness in their community lo using the local community radio, um, just having small community gatherings where people just kind of gossiped and chat, you know, chatted about what they had seen and kind of not scared their neighbors, but helped them to see that it's much easier just to grow the chili in your backyard than to buy it from the market because the farmers that are under pressure to to get these chilies to market are using dangerous chemicals that they don't want to use themselves. Um, so I've also tried to be a, a mouthpiece, although I, I'm not a very good one today. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been using the internet as a way to, to sort of connect what these farmers are doing with a much broader audience. And so I built a, a blog using WordPress, which is very easy for someone like myself who's not very technological. But um, this blog has been a great way for us to, to reach out to people in the English reading and speaking world uh, to share our stories and help uh, raise awareness. And that's how Ted got in touch with us. And I was lucky enough to, to come here. Um, so I kind of took a mobile social approach to raising awareness about the organization. Um, you know, not necessarily campaigning or asking for contributions, but trying to uh, tell these stories and use these available technologies, using a blog, using Twitter, using Facebook to just get it out there and see what people thought and who was interested. Um, and I think it's, I think it's working. Um, I was on the road a lot for my job, I lived in a, in a small village and farmed a lot of the time, but also would be traveling to other provinces. And when I was on the, on the road, I used a, 
a Bluetooth cell phone, and I could link up to my laptop, and anywhere I could just put a blog post onto the onto our website. And it was a really, it's been a really great tool to have, um, and I and I think it's uh, it's something that's going to become more and more useful to people that are working in rural areas that might might not have you know the iPhone or BlackBerry or whatever, um, and want to also upload more content like photos or videos. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm now farming in, the New, in New York State. Uh, part of what uh, I realized working for the AN was, was that I needed to learn how to be a farmer myself. I learned a lot about rice farming in Isan, but it's not very useful in the Northeast in the US. Uh, the climate's totally different. Uh, the growing season is totally different, and so I'm now committing myself to to becoming a farmer, at least or at least knowing how to farm where I'm from, and seeing where that takes me. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Jordan Templeton, who's in the audience somewhere, is going to be working for the AN in, over the next year, and our idea is to really create a continuing long-term resource for the network that is representative of a very close relationship that we've that these young students have created with the AAN and to continue working in the working together in the long term um, <clears throat> so this talk is also my chance to invite all of you to engage with what this network is doing we have a website we have an English speaking person who is ready to work with you and I hope that uh, anyone who's interested in what the AN is, is doing will, will take the time to actually get out into the fields and see how things are going on, how, how these farmers are growing food, uh, because we have become so out of touch with the things that we eat, the, uh, you know, the way that food comes to our, our plate. So, um, so please uh, contact us through our website, um, anisan.wordpress.com. And it would be great to have a visit from folks in Bangkok to come out to any part of our network, even if it's in central Thailand or other places that are more uh, tourist or travel friendly than Isan. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Thank you very much, Bennett.